Well, hello again, dear viewer. We have a special treat, a bonus video for you this month. Now, don't worry, this will not replace the Sappho follow-up coming out on the 19th. That is still right on schedule. This was just something I wanted to give you in addition to that. I'm assuming all of you have heard the drama surrounding Garo's shadow scale. Well, he's put out a statement recently, and I wanted to go over that statement in a reaction-style commentary, because there's a lot that I had to say once I watched this and a lot of dishonesty going on. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Garo Shadow Scale, I'll give you a brief spark notes on him. Garo Shadow Scale is a YouTuber and Twitch streamer with a somewhat sizable audience. Recently, he has been criticized for the way that he interacts with his community on Discord, as well as the way that he charges people and gives them quote-unquote rewards on Patreon, among multiple other things. There are multiple pieces of information that I will be presenting throughout this video in response to his direct statement to the controversy, but we'll get there when we get there. For now, we're just going to get into this. Hey guys, I've seen a lot of discussion about my channel, my Patreon, my Discord. I wanted to address it and talk about it. First, I want to apologize for being rude or offensive to several people in DMs in the past. It was not my intent, and I never wanted to hurt anyone. All right, we're off to a good start. A direct apology to certain people that he's been rude or offensive towards in the past. I think I can get behind that, and most people can as well. I am a blunt and straightforward person by nature, but I am making an effort to be more careful and considerate with how I phrase things. I'm genuinely very sorry for any hurt I caused to anyone. That was never my intention. Uh, seems like there was a slight backtrack on that apology with an excuse attached to it, but we'll look past that for now. We're gonna look past that. Now, the next thing, I've seen some people saying that my community is mostly made up of minors, and this is simply not true. YouTube is one of my biggest platforms and has some of the best analytics. And if you go down here, you can see that over 75% of my viewers are between the ages of 18 and 44. Less than 7% of my viewers are between the ages of 13 and 17. So less than 7% of my viewers are minors. The vast, vast majority of my viewers and community are over 18 years old. Now, while I'm inclined to agree, it's somewhat idiotic of people to start speculating at the age of your audience. That's not exactly true, what you've just displayed. YouTube analytics are a fine thing for tracking certain metrics, but as far as age demographics, there are ways that that can be very easily misconstrued. One way this can happen, for example, is when underage individuals sign up for accounts saying they're over the age of 18. There's nothing stopping them from doing this, and it will allow them to bypass filters that make it so they can view age-restricted content. In addition, multiple people who allow their children to watch YouTube will simply allow them to watch it on their accounts. So, for example, let's say somebody who is not old enough to even own an account starts watching it on their parents' account, under their supervision. Well, it would still track under the same age demographics as their parents' account, not necessarily the viewer. So while I do agree, it is somewhat dishonest for people to start making speculative accusations about your age demographics, it's also incredibly dishonest to try to use YouTube's age tracking metrics as your defense, especially when it's really just as speculative considering it can't be verified in a lot of different ways. Now, regarding my Patreon, I've seen that some people have the impression that people have to be pledged to my Patreon to be part of my community, or even to talk to me. That's simply not true. Most of my community isn't pledged, and I chat and hang out with them every day, and Twitch and Discord for hours, regardless of Patreon status. And I do that because I love it. I love talking to my viewers and hanging out with my community. But for people who want more options, the tiers exist. It's 100% an extra thing that people can choose to pledge to if they want to. No one is under any obligation to pledge to my Patreon. It is 100% up to personal choice. They are free to choose if they want those tiers and rewards. Please don't harass my community members and viewers based on what they choose to spend their money on. Well, all right, fair enough. Why don't we look at your Patreon very quickly just so we can get the elephant in the room right out of the way. 
So effectively we have the first tier which is $5 and it's solely a tipping tier. And I just want to point out very quickly, most tipping tiers exist at the $1 level and still have a Discord role and some kind of credit. Uh, I personally do this myself, so the fact that you're pretty much limiting any kind of donations to $5 at minimum to tip is kind of fucking greedy. Uh, j just a personal note, especially considering Patreon itself even suggests with multiple merch options that you can do with your Patreon that there are certain rewards you can give on somewhat monthly basis at the $5 tier, so that right there is just a little bit greedy to have that be your $5 tier. And when you factor in that the next tier up for actually getting any kind of rewards is $25, that's a pretty big jump in the amount of money. Um, personally, I don't think there's very many YouTubers out there at, at your size or even much bigger sizes who can justify that kind of Patreon rewards, and I don't know why anyone's actually donating to you given these reward tiers just off of these two, but let's actually look at your $25 tier to see what they're getting for their money. So at the $25 tier, you get Discord benefits, a guaranteed slot in his Minecraft server, a guaranteed slot in his Terraria server, priority access to VR chat with him, priority access to Jackbox with him, priority access to Among Us with him, Steam friend request, early access to his YouTube videos, ad-free YouTube videos, credited at the end of YouTube videos, but patron role in Discord, and tipping. So there are two things that I very quickly wanted to point out, and they are duplicates inside of this tier to make it seem like people are getting more rewards than they actually are, at least that's my impression of this, which is the tipping as well as the duplication here of early access to my YouTube videos and ad-free YouTube videos. See, the early access means that you're going to get them ad-free because they're not posted with advertisements from YouTube when you post them here on Patreon. So the fact that that's mentioned twice, you're getting the exact same reward. It just seems like you're getting more, uh, but you're really not. That's the same reward listed twice, and then the tipping there just makes it seem like you're getting even more for the $25, which you're effectively just not. Now I'll grant you, maybe you have fans who think the rest of that stuff up there is worthwhile, but at the same time, I really don't understand who's willing to pay $25 for the possibility of playing games with you. And we're actually going to get to some of the rules you have surrounding those games in a little bit, but first we're going to go through the rest of these tiers. Now the rewards we have here at the $100 tier are VR chat selfies with me, which I really, really don't know who's going to pay you $100 for that considering at the $25 tier, they can already play VR chat with you, and I'm pretty sure since it's on Steam, at any point they can just hit F12 and get a screenshot, so I mean, I don't know who's going to pay you $75 more for that, but let's continue. Daily in-game VR chat hug after stream starts, so basically a fake hug. Uh, that's cool. Uh, guaranteed VR chat slot with me, which I, I actually just wanted to mention very quickly. The previous tier states that they had priority access. Now, priority indicates that this is somebody who would be considered a VIP. They would be of the utmost importance. However, that right there is contradicted by somebody paying at the $100 level because you're basically guaranteeing them a slot, whereas you're giving somebody with by your words, priority access, a back seat. These things are incongruous and effectively it's misleading. It's very misleading to people who might donate to you. And as you can see, the guaranteed stuff, you know, it repeats for the Jackbox and Among Us, so effectively it nullifies other people's rewards just by existing, so that right there is in and of itself very disingenuous. Now this one is incredibly disingenuous as well, a 15% discount on merch. This, to me, is one of the most egregious rewards, because looking at his merch store, there doesn't seem to be anything that would really cover the cost of what you're actually paying per month on that $100 reward tier. Uh, unless you're buying his merch in bulk, don't think you're really saving any money. Realistically, you're actually going to wind up losing money donating to that tier than you would just buying the merch by itself. So, that right there is just an an egregious fucking lie as far as the that reward goes. You get an extra Beat Saber song request. I don't know what Beat Saber is, but the fact that you're getting a song request, it doesn't seem like a reward at all, really. Um, but, you know, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe that's something people are really, really chomping at the bit for. I don't know. And then the remainder of these rewards are all repetition from the previous reward tier, which, again, is solely to make it seem like you're getting even more things in the previous reward tier, which is simply not the case. All this reward tier does is give you a fake discount, because it's really not a real one once you look at the prices on his, on his store, 
for his merch, it effectively nullifies a lot of the previous rewards as far as priority going to guaranteed, so people who had priority might not have priority anymore, because somebody might have guaranteed, and then it just kind of repeats a lot of other stuff, among VR chat selfies and an in-game hug. So $75 really doesn't get you very much on this one, at least a $75 bonus from uh, 25 to 100 so now we're going to get to the $250 tier, and who buddy, considering that's a huge leap, I wonder, how, I wonder what kind of rewards we're going to get into here. Probably some really great stuff. So for $250, you're going to get 20 minutes to talk to him in private. Um, yeah, I, I don't know anybody who can justify that. I really don't. I don't know anyone who could possibly swing that kind of reward, but let's just see. Let's just see what else there is. Uh, you get a Discord DM every day. Now this, this right here, to me, is a really weird one, because previously in the video he stated that he loves talking to his community and he loves talking to them on Discord, so my question is, were you being dishonest then, or are you being dishonest with this reward? Because if it's a reward, and it's something that people need to donate to this tier to get, at that point you're basically just stealing people's money by giving away the reward for free. Do you see why this becomes a problem when you put that statement out there? Because either one, you're incredibly greedy and you're monetizing your ability to even talk to people, or two, you're just taking people's money because you're giving everyone the reward for free even though, you know, some people are paying you top dollar, a fucking premium, to get this. And literally that's all that changes between the $250 tier and the $100 tier. Everything else is repetition. It's repetition of the previous tier, so basically the extra $150 is to talk to him for 20 minutes once a month, which I'm assuming is once a month, um, and to get a Discord DM every day. That's that's the extra $150. Yeah, does, does that seem worth it to you? Because I really don't think it is. And lastly, we have the $500 tier, which, you know, the only difference, again, from the previous tier is that you also get a 20 minute private VR chat session and you get two Discord DMs every day, not just one. So these rewards are incredibly weak. It basically feels like highway fucking robbery, but that's just my opinion, you know? I don't know who would pay for this. Apparently there's enough people paying for this so that he's making a, a fucking grand a month off of uh, Patreon. So, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. That's all I gotta say. There's a sucker born every minute. And you're right, it is optional. People don't have to pay for this stuff. But the fact that you're taking this much advantage of your audience because you know they like you and they want to support you, and you're giving so little back to them, is fucking disgusting. I say that both as a person and a YouTuber myself. Somebody who has earned the respect of his own audience. This is fucking abhorrent. And you should honestly be fucking ashamed of yourself. Honest to God, I cannot imagine being so divorced from reality that you think this is acceptable. I really can't. Now, I've seen a lot of discussion about my Discord rules. If someone likes my Discord rules and wants to join my Discord server, they're more than welcome to join my server. If someone does not like my Discord server rules, they don't have to join my server. It 100% comes down to personal choice or preference, and you are free to agree or disagree with my rules. There are tons of other servers, Patreons, streamers, YouTubers, but please don't harass my server members for choosing to be here. Shut the fuck up. I'm gonna read you these server rules right the fuck now, because these are fucking... I don't even... I don't have the word. I don't even know the word for these rules. Rule number one. No active streamers slash YouTubers allowed here. Do not ask about advice slash resources. Do not mention your own or anyone else's stream, server, etc. Directly or indirectly, whether in my server or in DMs through my server. Now you know what, as far as promoting other Discord servers, fair enough, I have the same rule in my server. It's kind of contradictory to even running a server if people start promoting other ones in your server. But no active streamers slash YouTubers allowed here, and not even being allowed to ask for advice if somebody wants to actually become a streamer or YouTuber themselves. How fucking entitled are you? How self-centered can you fucking be? Have you never stopped to consider that maybe some of the people who actually watch you look up to you as somebody that they want to be like, and maybe that's why they would want to ask you for advice? They actually respect you? Is that like a foreign concept? Like, uh, how do you make this rule and not think to yourself, wow, I sound like a cunt while I'm writing this? Number two, no DMs or friend requests or gaming requests 
to other viewers. No RP or targeting other server members, especially with stream memes or reply slash tags. Keep the focus on myself and my content. You're basically sitting here telling people they're not allowed to talk to or about other things or other people, unless it's about you specifically. Like, and you're wondering how anyone is having any kinds of issues with these? Really? Number three, no arrogance slash selfishness slash toxicity slash drama slash negativity slash cursing. Stay humble slash positive slash respectful here. Well, you can go fuck yourself in your fat fucking ass. How does that sound for no cursing? And as far as the rest of that shit, why don't you go check a mirror? Rule number four, English only. No bold slash italicized slash underlined slash strike through text. Uh, no spam or excessive caps. Only text slash emotes in hashtag chat. To be honest, I don't have much to say about this one, except for it's a little bit limiting, but you do you, I guess. Like, like I'll be completely fair here, that's just like a, I guess, a, a rule you would see in a general Discord server or some shit, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to criticize you on for rule number four, that one, it's your prerogative. Number five, no NSFW slash fetish slash gore content or links slash discussion of relevant websites. No OC slash Sona artwork slash discussion unless it involves fan art of slash with me. Okay, so the first half of that one, I actually fully agree with. The second, I think, makes you sound like an entitled cunt who needs to sit down and be humble. Number six, Paw Patrol, Twitch subscriber, YouTube member, and Nitro Booster can link slash upload in the subscriber media group of channels and in the daily Discord stream. I guess, again, number six, just like number four, is kind of a kind of a rule that I don't take a whole lot of umbrage with. It's kind of whatever. Uh, it's your prerogative. Number seven, if you suspect anyone, even a mod, breaking these rules, DM me immediately. Message me, not the server, if you have questions about these rules. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't trust DMing you. I mean, unless somebody's willing to pay $250, I don't think they're gonna, gonna have a high chance of a response there, you know? Well, you know, either that or uh, all people have to do is start breaking rules so that they don't have to pay $250. I mean, one or the other. Either way works, I guess. But it doesn't end there because I'm going to read to you this one message sent by Garo in the rules. First off, server rules apply in all of these cases. Do not friend request or target other Wigglies. Of course we're playing together and there will be conversations and cooperation, but keep it to a minimum towards other Wigglies. Also, friend requesting or playing together in games like VR Chat, Among Us, etc. together when I'm not hosting are not allowed. Of course, my Minecraft and Terraria servers are perfectly fine to game with each other in 21-7. Just don't organize group activities without me, even if it's just with one other Wiggly. Focus on individual grinding and save new major events slash bosses for the Twitch streams. And, as always, keep the focus on myself and my content. Also, as mentioned in server rule number one, and in my Patreon disclaimer, active streamers slash YouTubers cannot claim these rewards or even be in my server. If at any point you start streaming or making YouTube vids, you will lose your rewards and you will be removed from my server. If you witness somebody violating this, let me know. Now we've fully discussed every single quote unquote reward you're going to get for donating to his Patreon and all of the asinine fucking rules here in the server but I want to just touch on that very, very quickly. A lot of people are more glossing over this point of active streamers slash YouTubers, as well as if somebody wants to start being a streamer or YouTuber. To me, I, I think that's a disservice to this. I think that's one of the most egregious things he's done to his community. Now, the reason I say this is because recently, and I, I didn't even know this until I'd spoken to them, as well as, you know, heard some of them say it, like, in videos themselves, but other YouTubers have previously mentioned that they even looked up to me. For example, Misha B. Barkin said in one of his recent videos that I was somebody who inspired him. Lago Vert let me know in DMs recently that I was also somebody who inspired him. I can't imagine if somebody who looked up to me tried to message me asking for advice or saying, hey, I want to make videos like you do. How, how can I do that? I can't imagine how crushing that would be for the response to be, you're not allowed to do that, and if you do, you can't be in my server, you can't support my Patreon anymore, you, and if you do, you still can't have any of those rewards. You have to make a choice effectively. You have to choose whether or not you want to keep looking up to me, 
or if you want to go off and strike out big on your own. That, to me, is one of the most disgusting things that Garo here has done, by trying to weaponize his own platform in that sense, and that's what it is, a weaponization. He's giving them an ultimatum. You can either support me, or you can follow your dreams, but you can't have both. And that, to me, is absolutely fucking disgusting. Garo, in my opinion, just on that one alone, you ought to be fucking ashamed of yourself. Just hands down. I post on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and some other platforms. I'm active and I interact with my community on a lot of other platforms, not just Discord. But I want to talk about the hate as well. There has been an intense amount of hate and harassment, not just towards me, but also towards my viewers, my patrons, my friends, my family members. Please don't hate and harass my viewers, patrons, friends, and family members over this. Please also do not DDoS my family members or moderators. We've been dealing with DDoS attacks for the past few days, which is not fair for anyone. It's just wrong. Nobody deserves to go through this. I want to make it very clear, in case this is true, I'm not saying it is, but in the event that it is, really don't attack his audience, don't attack his family, don't, don't go after people in his community or in his personal life. They don't deserve that. I genuinely agree. Don't DDoS them, don't harass them. If that's happening, don't attack people who do support him or enjoy his content. They didn't do anything wrong and they don't deserve it. However, I do think it is worth pointing out, I'm pretty sure that Garo is really mentioning this here specifically to try to get sympathy. Um, I'm not saying it's not true. It could very well be true and he's still trying to get sympathy. Both of these things can be true at the same time. But given how little of a shit he seems to give about his own community, yeah, I think this is really just trying to get sympathy. He's using his community here as a shield, a little bit of a crutch to try to limp away from the drama on. And I'm sorry if that seems really unfair, Garo, but that's genuinely what I think about you at this point. Finally, I just want to apologize again <clears throat> to the people I've hurt. I never intended to be hurtful. I'm learning from my mistakes, and I'm making a conscious effort to work on myself. So thank you for taking the time to listen and watching this video through. To my community, I'm sorry you have to experience this. I just want us to chat, game together, and have a good time. I'll do my best to get back to gaming and hanging out with you guys. Thank you for watching. Well, let's put a little bit of an asterisk on that one because you're only seemingly willing to game and chat with a lot of these people, giving them guaranteed and priority access, you know, if they pay you exorbitant amounts of money. And as far as the uh, improving yourself, uh, you must be a quick study considering most of those screenshots came from September of this year, but a benefit of the doubt on that one. Maybe two months is enough for you to have a massive overhaul of your entire, you know, way you interact with people. The video pretty much ends there, and basically what it amounts to is a slight apology with a little bit of a backsliding excuse attached to it, and a bunch of, oh, well, these are all just options, people don't have to do it. It's kind of like a con artist sort of excuse where it's like, oh, well, they didn't have to give me their money for this thing that I knew wasn't worth it. Uh, they just chose to do it. All I did was present them with an option. You still took advantage of them and you knew you were taking advantage of them, so don't try to pull that card. Anyway, that's going to be the video. I do hope you enjoyed. I'd like to give a thank you to my patrons. Puffermint, Percival CM, Marlow Knights, Riddle of Lightning, Xylon Arden, Lyo Convoy, Boyo, Busy Robot Hands, Anthony Ruth, Lucid Creator, Hateful Tate, Spoken Mind, and Shiloh Connor. And that's going to do it for this video, and I will catch you guys later.